I have built a new macro lighting setup to capture high magnification macro footage using the Zhijun X60 battery light with a super cool dome diffuser. The light itself is quite similar to the Molus X100 Pro, which I have tested in another video, but this version offers RGB lighting and comes with this really cool dome diffuser, which hopefully will provide soft lighting. As illumination is a huge problem using 5x macro lens, I was hoping to solve this using a magic arm. As the light comes again with this huge battery, which is really awesome as it lasts over an hour, the weight is kind of an issue. The magic arms I own are of poor quality, so that's probably something I need to invest soon. Otherwise, the arm will start to tilt at some angle, and shooting macro won't be fun at all. Before we're gonna take a closer look what is included in the package, here are a few macro shoots I took in the garden. As the temperatures are around zero degrees Celsius, it is freezing cold, and there is really not much to explore, at least when you think of bigger insects that can normally get spot in the spring or summer month. To find something interesting, I threw myself in the dirt, digging for springtails, snail, worms, and anything alive that I have not discovered before. This super small and lightweight 60 watt LED light comes with a huge battery that can power it for over an hour. It can also be powered via cable, but as I want to use it outside in the field, I am only interested in the battery solution. It is an all metal build with sleek lines packs that offers dual color temperatures without any flickerings and RGB lighting. The Molus X60 series is the smallest 60-watt full-color Cobb cinematography light on the market. And unlike my Sony Alpha 6700, it got no overheating issues. It also offers countless modes like firework, disco, police car, SOS, bad bulb, lighting, strobe, candle, and a lot more, which can also be controlled via an app. As I am having a little party tonight, I will also use it for non-filming purposes. But the coolest thing about this light are actually the diffusion kits like the dome or the mini softbox. Of course, it also has a quarter inch threaded hole, which I use to connect it to a magic arm. The only disadvantage of my new macro setup is the weight of the battery. But I have no idea how to solve this, as a lightweight version would only last for a few minutes outside. Maybe I will work on a more stable magic arm construction for better handling. Time to go outside and test and review it in the field. I mean in the dirt. As a warm-up shot, I went to my B hotels to get a first impression if the light is soft or if it produces ugly highlights. Even though it was freezing cold, the wild bees started flying around when the sun came out. As the sharpness of the Laowa 25mm is pretty average at 5x magnification, I was only cropping a little bit to keep the image quality high. The lighting is super soft which is great, but I had to adjust the position of the dome diffuser. When it shines directly into my macro lens, the image becomes even softer, and the resolution and sharpness is pretty poor. And remember, this is just video footage and not a high-resolution macro image. Then, I experimented a little bit with the RGB modes, but here it just ruined the shot. On this snail, it worked a little better, or let's say the result looks a little bit more natural. In some shots, you can add a unique look without the need of color correction in post, but I would not use too much colors unless you want to create art. As there are no insects around, I went through my garden flipping stones and dead wood to find something interesting. I am not 100% sure, but this might be a larvia of a black soldier fly. If you know what I have encountered here, please share your knowledge with us in the comment section. 
Even though this creature is one of my top 10 ugliest encounters ever, its skin reminds me of some sort of reptile skin which somehow makes this worm-like creature beautiful at the same time. Soldier fly larvae are highly efficient at converting organic waste into protein and can consume a wide variety of materials, including fruits, vegetables, and even meat. They are also able to break down and digest materials that are typically difficult to compost, such as citrus peels and animal bones. As the soldier fly larvae grow and molt, they shed their old cuticle and replace it with a new one. This process, known as ecdysis or molting, allows the larvae to grow and develop into their adult form. Even though this beetle seemed to need my help, I had to take a closer look. I had no idea how complex the movements of those tiny legs were to make it move properly. To get an even better look, I used a microscope. Even though he could just fly away, he was not able to turn around. I was pretty fascinated to get this close-up look, revealing the complexity how this beetles is able to move. Okay, enough. Time to flip him and set him free. After some time, I discovered this strange creature in the dirt. It seemed to be tangled with some worm-like structures. It looked like some kind of worm went through this crawler to eat it alive. While it seemed to die slowly, I took a closer look at those red tentacles. Those remind me of a scorpion stinger, but only one millimeter in size? The next shot blew my mind. I had discovered an insect I was looking for for years. And now, finally, I discovered one in my compost, a Chelifer concroides, also called the house pseudoscorpion. This means that it looks like a scorpion, but does not have a stinger. Chelifer cancroides is typically only a few millimeters long, making it one of the smallest arachnids in the world. Pseudoscorpions are known for their ability to hitch rides on larger animals, such as insects or birds, which allows them to travel long distances and find new habitats. Despite their small size, pseudoscorpions are fierce predators and have been known to attack insects several times their own size. Pseudoscorpions like Chelifer cancroids play an important role in many ecosystems, helping to control populations of tiny insects and other arthropods. Somehow its claw was attached to a small branch. After I observed it for a while, I decided to remove the branch and put it back into my compost. While looking for new interesting encounters in the dirt, I discovered some translucent eggs. As I have done several hatching time-lapse videos in the past, I will keep those eggs to see what will hatch from them. Probably some slugs. If you already know what kind of egg this might be, let us know in the comments section. The light this diffuser produces is really soft, making it a great addition to my macro setup. I wish that it was possible to produce batteries with the same power, but smaller and more lightweight. But I think this is not possible at the moment. The RGB modes are really awesome, but not for nature or macro photography. However, I will keep using this light in the living room to create a cool atmosphere when friends are here. I hope you enjoyed my macro shots at 7 to 10 times magnification. We are actually leaving the macro world and entering the microcosmos, which is even more interesting as we are able to explore our environment, which would not be possible with our bare eyes. Please let me know in the comments if you want to see more of the microcosmos or if you are looking for pure macro photography. Cheers.